Well, we're here today to announce our new coach of the Indiana Pacers. Um, I'm uh, really excited to have Nate to be a part of this. Um, didn't know a few days ago whether he was uh, really interested in being a head, of co head coach again, but uh, after finding out that he was going to Sacramento in search of a head coaching job, it made, made it pretty easy for me to to ask Kevin Pritchard, which had him in Portland, a lot of questions and uh, uh, spent a lot of time with Kevin and, and found out we had our man right here. So I'd like to welcome Nate um, back as a head coach. I know how difficult the job is, and uh, we look forward to good things. Um, first, I want to say thank you to Mr. Simon and fa his family and Larry Bird for the opportunity to uh, represent and coach uh, the Pacers organization. Um, you know, I've been here for the past three years, and uh, you know, I've just grown to love and respect uh, this team, this organization, uh, this community. I know how important uh, this hire uh, for a fan base is. Um, I'm totally committed to improving this team and trying to continue to uh, improve this team and take it to the next level. So I just want to say thank you uh, for this opportunity. Nate, in what way do you f feel like you can be that new voice that Larry has talked about? Well, you know, just the last three years uh, assisting Frank and, uh, you know, watching, uh, you know, what Frank was doing. Uh, for me, the, the really it goes back to 2005. Uh, when I was uh, started coaching in Portland, but I had the opportunity to uh, work with uh, you know some great coaches in Coach K, uh, Coach Beheim, Mike D'Antoni, and then the last three years assisting uh, with uh, Frank Vogel. I've learned a lot, and um, I think you know my approach will be a little different than it was uh, back in 2005. It seems like. Uh, when, you know, when I started with the Blazers, it's, it's so long ago. But things have changed. Uh, the players have changed. Uh, how you coach these players have changed. And I think the biggest thing is uh, being able to adapt. Uh, and that's something that uh, I've really watched uh, with uh, that Olympic staff and, uh, you know, working here with Frank. So uh, I wasn't chasing this opportunity. Uh, to be uh, another head coach. It, it had to be the right opportunity for me. And, um, you know, in the three years that uh, I've been here, there's only two times that I've even considered uh, getting back into the head coach or position that I wanted. There was one job last year uh, that uh, I felt was a good situation uh, that I asked my agent to speak on. That job was uh, taken. Uh, and then this year when Sacramento came and offered uh, or asked Larry for permission to talk to me, I went out to talk to them. And uh, then when I came back, uh, Larry called me in and asked me uh, about the position here. So, um, you know, I'm really excited for it. Nate, how will, you, how will your offense be different than it's been the past few years? What will your style be offensively? Well, you know, I th in terms of my style of play, you know, I think the first thing for us is uh, I'm sure Larry and I and uh, his staff will get together this week and we'll look at the players we have currently on the roster. And, uh, you know, the draft is coming up and we're going to have to uh, look at uh, selecting a player uh, in that draft and then the free agent market. So when you, in terms of looking at all of that, then you kind of hone, hone in on the system that you want to put in place. So to, to say how my style, what style, I think that's based on the roster that I have. Nate, you said that you've changed since 2005. And specifically in what ways when it relates to attitude, personality, 
Did I say I've changed or I'm, I may have to I'm change? sorry. Yeah. I've learned a lot. Yeah, I've learned a lot. And I think my approach would be a little different than what it was back in 2005. Yeah, you know, I think uh, some of us coaches who were coaching at that time, they, they call us old school. And um, there is a lot of old school in me. And, uh, you, you know, I won't lose all of that. But I, I do understand that you do have to adapt uh, to this generation. Of, of players, they call them the millenniums, and as uh, uh, far as how you communicate with them, um, uh, prepare them, and uh, you know that's something that I've, you know, we again we started talking about when I was with uh, USA Basketball, uh, Coach K and and his staff. Nate and Larry, if you don't mind, I'd like both of you to answer this. Have you have you noticed the Reaction, not just locally but nationally, to the whole transition, and what do you think of the reaction? Me? Both of you, if you don't mind. Um, not that it matters what the outside world thinks, but they don't. What do you think about what you're hearing? Yeah, this situation it happens a lot, and you know where uh, there's a coach that has had some success, and uh, organizations uh, for you know many reasons, and a lot of times is not necessarily based on success uh, is where that organization wants to go and how do they how do they get there uh, I, I mean I can just you know right off the top of my head you know there are a few coaches this season who were who had success last year and uh, you know one was in the finals and uh, I had a friend last year Monty uh, Williams who uh, did a good job I thought and uh, you know so that that happens and it really goes back to the organization and, and where they are, where they, where they feel they are, and uh, where do they want to go. And uh, so it, in our business, uh, it happens. And, you know, I, you know, I sent a text to, uh, to uh, Frank, and, you know, it happens to the best. Uh, so it's just sometimes it's part of the business. Well, you know, I, I respect people's opinion, but I don't have to agree with it all the time. And, uh, you know, I hate to disappoint you, but I don't get up every morning and get on the Internet and read what's going on around the world. Uh, I know there's a lot of people have their name um, associated with it. Every time it, their name's mentioned, it pops up, and they read about themselves, or good or bad. My job here is to do the best I possibly can to put the best team and, and win as many games as I possibly can with the Pacers, and that's what I'll do. Uh, until I won't be doing it anymore. Uh, I believe in Nate. I've admired him from afar for a long time. Uh, I like the, the job he did in Portland. I like his demeanor. Um, I like the old school. I like the players be held accountable. I like structure. Um, I like a lot of things that, that Nate brings to the table. I'm not saying that Frank didn't have them, but um, I've always admired Nate from afar, and, and that's one of the reasons it didn't take me long to make my decision about him. Nate, to run you know, your offense, you were suggesting that you have to take a look at the players. What kind of players or style of players do you want to see brought in here? Well, you know, that's something that, uh, again, uh, I'll talk with Larry about. We'll talk about that, his team. As far as uh, you, one thing that you know, the head coach don't get involved in the draft, and you know we'll we'll talk about the draft and the free agency, uh, and you know old friend of mine's you know uh, used to compare teams to a pie, and uh, you know he would always say to me uh, that pie is going to be as good as the ingredients you put in it, you know so and and that's what you know uh, will happen with this team, you know the style of play. Uh, you know, the one thing that I've seen Larry do is he has a style in mind, and he has, uh, over the last year, uh, since talking about playing faster, uh, but being more efficient in what we do, uh, he's tried to bring those players in. And, you know, perfect example, uh, I thought was Ty Lawson, you know, and uh, that's the one thing that, uh, 
I'm excited that I know that he is constantly, both he and Kevin, trying to improve this roster to uh, not only play the style that we feel uh, we want to play and, and can win at, but they're looking to bring those guys in. Larry, did you seek any feedback from players before making this final decision? And did you pursue, did you have any preliminary discussions with other candidates for the job? Um, I've talked to a couple people on the phone. Um, there's a lot of interest in the job. Um, I didn't call all the players and get their opinion, um, but I have talked to a few of them, uh, a couple of them, matter of fact, just two. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's interesting that uh, uh, sometimes in this job, it's just like when I decided to coach, everybody was shaking their head going, what's he doing? I was even shaking my head. Uh, but overall, I felt that uh, it's something I wanted to do and, and, and get the experience, and, and I knew the Pacers had a very good team. Um, in this situation, I think because of uh, Frank was well-liked, I think he had some success here. Uh, we didn't butt heads too much, uh, but I do think our offense uh, was stagnated at times. I th uh, on the defensive end, I have no problem. Dan Burke, I don't know if you know this, but Dan Burke's been running our defense here for for a long time. Uh, hopefully we can retain him and he wants to come back. He's been a very integral part over 19 years of what we've done here. So it, it's important for me that uh, he would be my first free agent. And, um, and uh, along with uh, Popeye and, and, and whoever Nate brings in. But overall, I, I feel that this, this, this team, we do have some holes right now and, and through free agency. And I don't know if we'll get anyone to help us right away in the draft. but. We're open to everything. You know, we can move the pick and, and, and get a veteran player, or, or we can stand pat and just continue to add to our young core. Larry, given his connection to Nate in Portland, how big of a role did Kevin Pritchard's voice play in this entire decision process? Well, he, you know, he, he just told me about Nate, and, and um, I wanted to confirm some of the things I thought. We had many discussions about him. But when it comes down to the final say, you know, obviously I have the final say in what we're going to do. But it's good to have someone you can bounce ideas off, and it's good to, to get someone else's input, and especially with Nate, uh, really the ins and outs, because he spent a lot of time with Nate. And uh, he told me the pros and, and some of the cons, but uh, uh, the positive outweighed the negatives by a lot, large margin. Nate, uh, Larry has mentioned, obviously, having a new voice, a, a new way to approach players. You've obviously mentioned what your process has been like from being an assistant head coach, and I think you went through this in Seattle, being an assistant before taking the head coaching job, mm -hmm. what did you learn in that particular experience, and how will you might use that, or how do you plan to approach players now being the head coach? Well, I think communication is uh, just so important. And, uh, you know, my first job in Seattle, I had been an assistant for uh, really a year. So... Uh, you know, when Wally Walker came up to my office and uh, offered me the position, uh, I had no idea that uh, that was going to happen. And uh, I had to make a decision within an hour of addressing uh, that Sonics team. So really, that coaching in Seattle was like on-the-job training. I really had no experience coaching. Uh, I've, I had only put in a year uh, as an assistant. And uh, here I was, uh, you know, running uh, an organization. Uh, that time really helped me. Uh, but and then when I went to um, Portland, uh, still I really had about four years under my my belt. I really felt that uh, the USA Olympic team, where I was assistant coach there for seven years, and uh, working with Coach K and uh, working with Coach Beheim, and then my three years here with Frank, you know, looking at someone else, how they do things and how they run their team, uh, really helped me uh, or will help me uh, in, my, in this new job that I'm taking. What did you learn specifically working with Frank that you may not have uh, experienced beforehand, and how might you? I know it's still early, but how might you be different from Frank? And, and 
Well, those things. you know, the one one thing that uh, you know we we as coaches have to do, and uh, I thought I did this in Portland. You have to adapt. You know, we had so many injuries in Portland uh, that every just about once, twice a week, uh, we had a different rotation uh, because we had guys in and out of the lineup, and I uh, had to adapt to uh, the players that we had and uh, continue to try to, to win. I thought Frank did that this year. Uh, you know, we, we start off with, uh, you know, playing a spread lineup. And um, we started, uh, we felt that that was an okay lineup. But the big lineup uh, was a better lineup for us. Uh, we would go from uh, Lavoy in that lineup until we ended up get, putting Miles in the lineup. So we were ad adapting all season long. And... Um, but in handling the players, uh, and you know, this is one thing that uh, both Frank and uh, Coach K, uh, with uh, you know that that national team, adapting to those guys and what they, uh, how they operate every day, and um, communicating with them, I think is the area where it really helped me and uh, to be a little bit more patient and uh, some of the things that uh, you demand from these players. Nate, can you touch on, for the Pacer fans, what type of um, you know, product that these fans can see on the basketball court for us, your, the style of play and the effort by your, your players? Well, you know, the one thing about me is, is, is you know, I, I had to play this way. Uh, you know, we want, we're going to respect the game, okay? We're, we're going we're gonna to respect our opponents. Uh, we're going to respect that name on the front of the jersey. Uh, all of that is really important. Uh, and what I mean by respect the game, uh, you mentally and you physically prepare yourself uh, to go out and play hard every single night. Okay, every single night. And those things, you know, once you come back and you start the season, you're totally committed to doing the things you need to do to perform on that court out there. Um, you know, the opponents, uh, you know, you, you get in and you do the things that you need to do, whether we're at home or on the road, to be ready. The fan base, I totally understand that, uh, you know, the Colts are a great football team. They are my adopted football team. But I know Hoosiers love basketball. I know how important that is to this community. And I want this to... Um, you know, I remember coming here and playing and uh, at Market Square and how, you know, that crowd was when Reggie and those guys were there. You know, one thing that I, I took notice of, uh, I think it was game one here. Um, we had half the arena. It was Toronto. That was like, no, I don't supposed to be. That doesn't supposed to happen. Uh, I want this fan base to, I want us to get that, get uh, Baker's life rocking and rolling. Uh, I want this uh, team to be a team that the, uh, the state is proud of. I know we have an impact. We will have an impact on how people get up and go to work in the morning, whether they feel good or bad. And, uh, you know, that weight on our shoulders, I want us to understand that so that every night uh, we come out, we are, you know, giving our all. Uh, we're trying to take this team uh, to the next level, and um, I've experienced that the last three years, and uh, that is my goal, you know, moving forward. Larry, you mentioned a few things already, but was there one thing in particular over all else that sold you on Nate for this spot, and the couple players that you talked to, was there things that they mentioned that they liked in Nate? Well, the players just said, it, you know, they like Nate, and uh, they're ready to go work for him. Um, there's not really one thing. There's a, you know, this job is more than just offense or defense. It's a little bit of everything. And, and Nate touched on a while, a while ago about communicating with his players. I think communication is one of the most important things. Every player wants to know where they stand at all times, uh, why they're not playing, or why they get taken out of games at a certain time. Uh, but I think Nate's uh, ability to handle all that uh, he's proved it uh, in Portland and he proved it in Seattle that he can do that. And uh, I think it's very important. So it's not just one or two things. It's, it's really a, 
a lot of things. There's more that goes into than just throwing the ball up in the air. Um, you know, it's preparation, it's uh, playing hard, it's playing together. Um, you know, you're not always going to play well, but you can always give the effort. And I think Nate will get that out of him. Apologies for the voice. Um, both you guys, as you sort of shape this team moving forward with Miles and Jan being a free agent, how do you view that combination? Do you view Miles as a four who can play with a guy like Jan? Do you want to keep Jan back as Miles a five? How do you sort of want to build the dynamic of the roster starting with that front court? Well, it, you know, when uh, Larry talked to me about the position and, um, I'm, you know, I had a lot of time to think about it, uh, I just get excited. You know, I've, I've been excited uh, to be a part of this uh, franchise. But now, you know, being in the position as a uh, head coach, I'm looking at Miles and I see a very similar team to the team I had in Portland. And to me, Miles is very similar, and I've said it to uh, Larry and, and uh, Kevin, to LaMarcus Aldridge. You know, they both come from the same university. Uh, that kid's work habit is amazing. Um, you know, he puts in his time. Uh, I think he will one day be an all-star in this league. And, uh, you know, I just get excited with his growth. I thought both uh, he and Paul uh, during the playoffs went to another level. And uh, that kid continued to improve. I think he's a five. I feel as though his best position is a five. But he showed his ability to work and try to play the four. Uh, so you, you have uh, that ability if you want to go big, uh, similar to what San Antonio was doing with uh, LaMarcus and, and Tim. Uh, you, you, you can do that. Uh, and he worked hard to, to play that four position. But I think his strength will be uh, at the five position. Defensively, he may strive to improve throughout the year. Uh, and offensively, I think it'd be a nightmare for five to defend his ability to move out to the perimeter to shoot the ball. Nate, why? I, I, I agree with him. I think Miles, uh, I think he played both positions. But uh, we, long term, I think we view him as a center. Obviously, he's got to get stronger, like most players do when they come in the league. But um, the talent's off the charts. And uh, what we got to try to do, or Nate tries to do, is get the most out of him every night. And that's the only way you can improve these guys, is to work them, uh, lead them, um, teach them. And uh, if you got the ability and the talent, it don't take as long as some other guys. So he's got it. He's got the work ethic. Um, he's got an opportunity to, to make great strides through the summer and be ready for next year. But I wouldn't be afraid to put him in there at the power forward either because uh, he's proven that he can play both positions. I think now it's just him getting stronger. Nate, two thoughts here. Why didn't this spread unit work early in the season? And do you expect to go back to that? as soon as you start the 2015-2016 season? Well, it's, it's not uh, – it worked. I mean, it worked at times. And, it, uh, you know, the thing was the, the, the bigger unit uh, was just more effective. Uh, and, you know, we're in the business of we're – not, we're not developing here. You know, uh, we want to win games. Unlike, you know, my team in Portland, we were developing there. And you could stick with something if uh, – if you had the time to do so. Uh, the, the, we had injuries. I think what happened with Miles, uh, CJ was starting and uh, ended up having an injury, and we had to change how we, we played. Uh, we, I think we slid Lavoie into that lineup, and that lineup you know, started working for us. And uh, we went back to CJ, and I think, again, another injury came into play, and we... Uh, ended up having to go back to that big lineup. So it was, ba it was just adapting to the season as opposed to, you know, d did it work or not work? Uh, we had some success with that lineup. It was just a big lineup was, we thought was better. And you expect to try it again? Well, again, we will look at uh, what we do in free agency, uh, you know, our draft pick, 
And, uh, you know, it's hard to say what you're going to do right now because we do have some key free agents that uh, we have to make some decisions on. And, uh, you know, that's going to dictate as uh, far as, you know, how we play next season. You mentioned accountability over the last couple of years several times. What specific ways do you want that improved upon? Well, I think our practice habits. I think um, uh, respecting one another a little more. Um, uh, there's a lot that goes into it, but uh, everyone's got to be held accountable, not just one or two guys. Everyone on the team, is, uh, they're all important. Um, you don't have a team unless you have everybody pulling together. And I think the coach is, is the guy who sets a tone for it. And, uh, and you treat everyone basically the same. There's guys who get more shots and more playing time, but they're all humans. They're all good kids, and uh, they're all strive to get better. And I just think you've got to hold them all accountable. <clears throat> Larry, um, you said that you didn't realize he wanted to be coaching until Sacramento happened. Is, is it possible? Is there any way to know? Were you going to go down to him and ask him about the job, or did that kind of trigger in your head? Wait a minute, maybe Nate. Well, I've always, like I said, always admired Nate, but, you know, sometimes guys just feel comfortable in certain roles. Uh, I never sit down with Nate and, and ask him what his future holds, and I never really talk to him about a lot of things uh, other than basketball. But uh, to me, just going back and, and watch what he did in Portland and, and, and getting started in Seattle and, and the way he carries himself, and like he said, he's old school. I sort of like uh, like that. Um, it's not like you got to get up in players' faces anymore, and yell and scream, but you do have to have control, and you do have to have their attention. And and I'm sure Nate will have that. Uh, but uh, I'm glad that uh, uh, he wanted to be a head coach. And uh, to me, it was pretty simple. Um, uh, talk to him. Uh, talk to Kevin. Like I said, a number of times. And the choice for me was very easy. Larry, um, one more thing. Sorry, Martin. Um, what have your conversations with Paul George been like since you agreed to become the coach? I haven't talked to any of our players. Um, you know, th this happens so fast that uh, I haven't spoke to uh, any players. Um, and uh, but I definitely communicate with uh, with our guys. Uh, this week. Larry, uh, how do you feel about the point guard position? Do you feel like you need an upgrade there? Well, we, we, you know, we've talked about this for a, a number of years. And uh, what we have here, we have a budget. And we stay within our budget. And if we get an opportunity to get a point guard, we probably will look at it. Uh, but uh, to run around and say, well, you should get this guy or get that guy, um, you know, it's, it's a little harder than you think it is. Uh, but obviously, I would like to have a, a real point guard. I felt comfortable when Ty Lawson was here making plays and, and getting up down the court. Uh, but, you know, the summer um, is going to be full of surprises, I think, because um, the new cap and players moving around, I think there will be a lot of trading. I think guys will um, be moving teams. Uh, so it's all new for all of us in this business. But uh, to sit here and tell you I'm going to get a point guard, I really don't know yet. Uh, there's some out there I really like. Uh, but uh, with Monte and, and George Hill, I, uh, Joe Young, uh, I think Joe's going to improve this summer and, mm -hmm. and, um, and help us out. But, uh, uh, you know, we have some needs and we have some players we really like, and, and we hope we can go out there and get them.